guys, it's Angelo, and welcome to my Frostmage rotation guide for World of Warcraft's patch 9.1 and the Chains of Domination. The Frostmage is looking like a very promising spec in patch 9.1, right along with Arcane, and will most likely be the most promising and engaging spec to play, especially for the first 5 mythic bosses and the general start of progression. For many mages who were previously playing Fire in patch 9.0.5, the switch to Frost should be very refreshing, as Frost brings essentially the highest 2 target cleave and funnel damage in the game with it, along with very short cooldowns. What the spec lacks in high amounts of burst damage, it makes up for an incredible amount of sustained damage over the fight duration, only getting higher with more targets, which plays highly into the spec's cards in the Sanctum of Domination. In this video, we'll be covering everything you'll need to know, so how to deal the most damage in a single target straightforward situation, how to maximize your damage depending on the amounts of enemies in combat with you, and how to use your cooldowns and your talents the most effectively. We'll also be going into detail on how exactly the Covenant abilities alter your rotation, and how to implement these factors into your gameplay. Now, if you would like to join the discussion with anything World of Warcraft related, then be sure to join our Discord server with the link in the description box below. Also, just a quick reminder, I'm streaming on Twitch once more with this coming patch, with my schedule currently shifting around a little because of all the videos I am making, but you will most definitely see me at my raid evenings from 6pm Central European time to 11pm and I will be starting on Wednesday, so be sure to tune in if you have any questions. Apart from that, I know that you all can't wait to prepare yourselves for Shadowlands patch 9.1, so let's go right ahead and have a look. Alright, let's start us off with the changes that the Frost Mage will be receiving in patch 9.1. Now, <laughs> this may surprise you, but the answer to this question is actually incredibly simple to answer. None at all. The Frost Mage hasn't seen any legendary, spell or spec specific changes that would actually affect it. No nerfs to any spell, no buffs, it remained exactly the way it was. And exactly this is why the Frost Mage is strong now though, because it was Fire that received quite a lot of significant nerfs. With Fire mostly out of the top spot now, definitely so for rating by the current looks of it, this means Frost can fill some of the gaps which the nerfs to Fire Mage left. There are 4 new legendaries coming to the mage in patch 9.1, but honestly none of these are relevant for this guide, as none of them are more powerful than the ones we're going to cover. Ok, with that brief topic out of the way, let's jump right into the rotation. Ok, so before we begin with the details of the rotation, let's talk about the overall idea behind the frost mage. The Frost Mage can be considered the easiest of the three mage specs, as almost all of its strength comes from procs, instant casts or very direct, relatively short casts. The foundation of the rotation is pretty simple. Cast as many Frost Bolts and Frozen Orbs as possible, and utilize all procs which come from these spells as much as possible, those procs being Fingers of Frost and Brain Freeze. Though this foundation is quite simple, it becomes incredibly engaging once your procs appear, and you're faced with the using of multiple procs in combination with one another, while weaving casts like Frostbolt and Blizzard in between their use. The twist with the procs you'll be using is that they will most likely be critical strikes, due to the Frost Mage passive Shatter, which multiplies your critical strike chance on enemies which are frozen, or are treated as if they are frozen by your procs, by 1.5, and also adds a flat 50% critical strike chance on top. This passive is effectively the basis of all of your damage, as your procs will always treat the target as if it is frozen, and will therefore most likely strike critically. This is also a direct way to understand the Frost Mage's power scaling. The more base critical strike you have through gear, the easier it is to apply your damage in practice. The amount of procs changes depending on your legendary use, but the good thing is that your procs are always used in similar fashion, no matter how many targets are in front of you. Now, this is good and bad. It's good because no matter if you have 1 target or 5 targets in front of you, you will never have your procs change the essence of your rotation, and your spells will always have the same effect. 
It's bad because none of your procs have any potency beyond two targets if you're not playing with a specific legendary, which limits your AoE capabilities mostly down to using Frozen Orb, Blizzard and Ice Lance, which only hits a maximum of two targets when talented accordingly. Though this limits your AoE, this truly highlights the Frost Mage's strength, which is a stacked cleave situation between two to five targets where you can simultaneously split your damage onto two targets while all targets allow you to get more procs and, due to Blizzard, more frozen orbs. Okay, let's take a look at your single target rotation. Okay, now since we benefit so much from procs and instant casts, our damage rotation is much more of a priority list and this is no different in single target. At its core, your single target gameplay revolves around casting Icy Veins and Frozen Orb, then using Frostbolt as much as possible in order to get either Brain Freeze or Fingers of Frost procs and then using these procs in the right order. Brain Freeze is the stronger proc of the two baseline, meaning you will want to use Flurry once Brain Freeze is up to apply Winter's Chill. This causes your next two spells to deal damage as if the target was frozen of course. Now, the trick to understand here is that Flurry fires three consecutive bolts, and the second two projectiles of Flurry will reflect the application of Winter's Chill from the first cast, or rather from the first bolt. Since Winter's Chill is applied once Flurry actually hits the target, this also leaves room for a grace period for you to not waste a Flurry proc before you can make use of the one you already have right now. The travel time effect also means that you want to pair a Flurry proc with a Frostbolt, since Flurry travels faster than Frostbolt and will therefore activate Winter's Chill on the target before your Frostbolt hits, allowing your Frostbolt to critically strike. Since Frostbolt is responsible for both Flurry procs as well as Fingers of Frost procs, which are your Iceland's procs, casting as many Frostbolts as possible to trigger these procs is very important. Fingers of Frost causes your next Ice Lance only to treat the target as if it were frozen and deal damage accordingly. Generally speaking, your Flurry procs are worth more than your Ice Lance procs because Flurry simply deals more damage and opens up more effects. You can use a Flurry proc to throw in Ice Lance or rather two Ice Lances due to Winter's Chill, but you cannot use an Ice Lance proc to make use of an instant cast Flurry in return. Even though it will be simple for you most of the time, and you will just use the Flurry proc before the Ice Lance proc, due to both procs coming from Frostbolt casts, there is a chance that you will get both procs simultaneously at times, since the Ice Lance proc does not open up the rotational options, you'll ideally want to get rid of it first, before pairing it with your Flurry proc, or rather pairing a Frostbolt with your Flurry proc. In the rare occasion that you have both procs up while already casting a Frostbolt, you will need to use the Flurry proc first in order not to waste a potential new Flurry proc that could stem from the Frostbolt that you've just casted. Don't worry, that's about as hard as it gets in your life as a Frost Mage, I promise. I hope you're still with me, and now let's move on to your multi-target and AoE rotation. Once more, your rotation simply follows a priority in AoE or rather multi-target as well. Icy Vein sits atop of this priority list and, as you reduce its cooldown with critical strikes, you want to use it as much as possible. Frozen Orb would be next on this list, as Frozen Orb generates Ice Lance procs even more when playing with the Freezing Winds legendary and therefore wants to be used as much as possible. Since Frozen Orb and Blizzard go hand in hand, you will want to keep Blizzard up at all times once you're fighting two targets or more. Once your Rune of Power from Icy Veins expires, be sure to cast a new one and keep Rune of Power on cooldown the same way you would in single target. Apart from that, simply follow your single target priority list. Ice Lance if you have a Fingers of Frost proc and Flurry if you have a Brain Freeze proc. When playing with Freezing Winds as your legendary, you will essentially just spam Ice Lance for the duration of Frozen Orb because it gives you so many Ice Lance procs, making the rotation even easier. At 5 targets, and when simply trying to bomb down the trash pack as quickly as possible, you can replace Frostbolt with Arcane Explosion while still making use of your procs and keeping all the aforementioned spells on cooldown. 
let's jump over to your cooldowns now and actually take a more detailed look exactly at what they do and why they're so important. Okay, as we've discussed before, the Frost Mage has three very important cooldowns. One of these is a talent, but since you will most likely always play with this talent, it's safe to count this as a regular cooldown. Icy Veins is where most of your damage will come from, and it's what makes your rotation flow. Icy Veins increases your haste by 30% and allows you to be immune to any delaying of your spell casts. This means you can still be interrupted, but you won't lose progress on your casts when being attacked. The 30% haste allows you not only to cast a lot more important spells like Blizzard, Frozen Orbs, or your procs much faster, it also allows you to cast a lot more Frost Bolts, which in return grant you a lot more procs. Due to a conduit you will most definitely want to be playing, called Icy Propulsion, all critical strikes reduce the remaining cooldown of Icy Veins by at least one second, more with higher conduit rankings. On top of this, Thermal Void, your go-to level 50 talent, extends the duration of Icy Veins by one second for each Ice Lance against frozen targets. I'm pretty sure you can easily understand the synergy here now. Icy Veins not only enables you to use more procs and critical strikes, it also directly benefits from your critical strike in multiple ways. I'll go into detail with Conduits and Talents in my Frost Mage guide coming up in a couple of days and it will pop up on the info tab of this video once it's online. Even though Icy Veins itself is already very powerful, it only ties your rotation together when paired with Frozen Orb. Frozen Orb deals quite a solid amount of damage, especially in AoE, but also it does something much more important. It grants you Fingers of Frost. When first striking an enemy, it will automatically grant you one charge of Fingers of Frost, and after that, it has a 10% chance to grant you a charge for each hit it deals. When playing with the Freezing Winds Legendary, Frozen Orb will automatically grant you a charge of Fingers of Frost every 2 seconds, so an Ice Lance proc every 2 seconds for free until the orb expires. Since Blizzard in return reduces the cooldown of Frozen Orb by 0.5 seconds each time it deals damage, this means that one doesn't want to exist without the other and you will always want to place a blizzard when using a frozen orb as long as there are at least two targets active and in range of your blizzard. As you can see, Frost Mage has crazy amounts of synergy, arguably more than most other classes in the game, most certainly rivaling that of the Shadow Priest and the Windwalker Monk. Our final cooldown of course is Rune of Power, which is a raw damage increase. Whenever you're standing within or close to your Rune of Power, your spell damage is increased by 40%, which, needless to say, is very significant. For your convenience sake, Icy Veins will automatically place a Rune of Power underneath you, and you have one extra charge for when that one expires. Okay, next up, let's take a look at your main talent build and discuss how this ties into your rotation. Okay, now fortunately for you and I, Frost Mage only really makes use of one talent build this tier, identical to the one from last tier. All of the used talents tie in or somehow buff your Ice Lands directly, which helps to not take away the flow of the rotation, while also keeping things very plausible and easy. Lonely Winter replaces your Water Elemental and instead gives your Frost Bolt, your Ice Lands and your Flurry 25% increased damage. We've already talked about Rune of Power Strength, which is basically Lonely Winter, only almost double as potent, but on a cooldown and only for a short period of time, of course. Chain Reaction increases the damage done to frozen targets by your Ice Lance by 3%, and this stacks up to 5 times, stacking with each successful Ice Lance cast against frozen targets. You don't have to pay attention to this talent at all, really, it does the magic itself and is up and available for you most of the time. Splitting Ice is where the power of our current build comes from for the most part, at least when talking about Cleave. Your Ice Lands and Icicles deal 5% more damage and hit a second nearby enemy for 65% of that damage. This is where the Cleave potency comes from, as your Ice Lances will strike a second target for a lot of damage, 
and rather than splitting the damage in the middle, you will simply deal 100% damage to your main target and 65% extra damage to your second target, essentially gaining a lot of damage rather than having to split it. Finally, we have Thermal Void. Thermal Void is the other part of the Frost Mage's talent power, as it, as mentioned before, extends your Icy Veins duration by 1 second for each Ice Lance hit against frozen targets, while also giving your Icy Veins an extra 10 seconds duration baseline. Our talents, just like our baseline rotation, go hand in hand with one another and synergize incredibly well. Let's take a look at the legendary options you will be choosing in patch 9.1 really quick. I've talked about Freezing Winds frequently throughout this video, but Freezing Winds isn't your only option to pick from. Though Freezing Winds is undoubtedly your best all-around option, as well as your superior choice for cleave fights, you can pick Glacial Fragments for AoE, or for cleave where you need to split the damage a bit more than two targets, but of course that is rarely ever the case. Playing with Glacial Fragments comes at the cost of dealing no relevant single target damage however, which is why this legendary is mostly your least plausible option in most, if not in all situations. For pure single target, Slick Ice performs better than Freezing Winds, and you'll definitely want to craft it and have it available for boss fights which are pure single target, such as the Guardians of the First One for example, or even the Terra Gru. Stick to these three legendaries in general and you'll have something available for any situation. Single target, cleave and AoE. Okay, lastly let's talk about how to use our covenant abilities during combat. Even though most of you will probably be playing Venthyr, the by far best covenant choice for Frostmage, I'll discuss the use of all of them briefly. Radiant Spark is your Kyrian covenant ability and ideally it will be used when paired with Flurry. As we've discussed in the rotation section of this video, the Frost Mage ideally wants to always be either casting something or using procs, therefore you will replace Radiant Spark with a Frost Bolt whenever you have a Brain Freeze proc ready to use with Flurry. With the Radiant Spark hitting the target before the Flurry, this means your incoming Flurry deals 10% increased damage and will immediately soak 3 of the 4 stacks of increased damage from Radiant Spark. Deathborn, your Necrolord Covenant ability, should basically be used on cooldown, paired of course with your Icy Veins as much as possible, and during your burst window along with Frozen Orb as well. Deathborn has quite a long cooldown, as long in fact, or rather that long that none of your cooldowns ever really line up with it at that well, which highly reduces its actual potency for you, which is of course why this choice isn't really that good for Frost. Next up we have Shifting Power, your Night Fae Covenant ability, and now the only redeeming quality that Shifting Power has for a Frost Mage is the fact that it reduces your cooldowns when it's used. The problem here is that everything else in your toolkit revolves around reducing the cooldown already of your different abilities anyways, and Shifting Power doesn't really add much to the already existing idea behind this. On top of this, it deals atrocious amounts of damage and is only really good when used once Icy Veins is on cooldown and if you have 5 targets in front of you that can get struck by it. Last, but certainly not least, we have Mirrors of Torment, your best covenant ability. Mirrors of Torment gives you 3 extra brain freeze procs every 1.5 minutes, which is actually quite huge, because this of course also results in 6 Winter's Chill applications on the target that you have extra. When running with Freezing Winds, you will want to hold on to Mirrors of Torment for after Frozen Orb is finished, as otherwise you will get an almost unmanageable amount of procs which can become difficult to utilize, considering you will have to recast Blizzard after some time, and during this cast alone you'd already be wasting Fingers of Frost procs if you choose to use your Brain Freeze from Mirrors of Torment. When not playing with Freezing Winds, so in pure single target, you'd be using it on pull. Either way, it's incredibly simple to use and offers a very high amount of extra damage every 1.5 minutes. Now let's summarize everything we've gone over. Overall, Frostmage is looking to become a very powerful spec in patch 9.1. 
the excellent cleave and the overall very consistent damage will most likely make Frost the strongest spec in the Sanctum of Domination of all three mage specs, at least for early progression. Whether or not Arcane will beat Frost in the long run, or Frost will turn out to be the go-to mage spec of all, that remains to be seen. Be sure to let me know what you think of course. Have you been playing Frost already? Are you excited to switch away from fire? Why or why not? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And that being said, thank you everyone so much for watching. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to give it a like and if you want to stay updated on the content of this channel in the future, feel free to subscribe. A special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon and Twitch, you guys are awesome and help out a lot. Now as always, have a good one my friends, have fun in patch 9.1 and I will see you all in the next one.